Not all good things are available via official channels. Even some of the best applications on Android can actually be grabbed from outside of Google's app storefront. Here are some of our favorite apps that you won't find on the Google Play Store. A couple of things we need to know ahead of time though is because we're sourcing apps from outside the Play Store, you will need to know how to sideload these on your phone. Most of you will probably already know this, so skip this. The process though is super simple, but you may need to adjust some on-device security privileges after you've downloaded these. So if you hit install on a downloaded application via Chrome or whatever application you're using, you'll often get a pop-up that will warn you that your security for the installation of unknown apps may be blocked. The tap the settings button on this and then you'll reach a page titled install unknown apps. Now just toggle allow from this source and it'll install the application that you've downloaded. It's super easy. We've also vetted our very tightly curated list of third party applications way ahead of time. So you can rest assured that these are safe and won't cause any issues with your Android phone or even your tablet. That said, you can never be too careful. So if you're worried or concerned, there's no shame in sticking to downloading apps from the Play Store. And I would say, enjoy the video either way. So to make finding applications outside of the Play Store, you might want a repository or alternative digital storefront like Aurora Store or F-Droid. And these work in a similar manner to the Play Store with search functions, sections, categories, and simple ways to keep any of the apps you've downloaded from these stores updated and secure. You don't need both of these apps installed on your phone, but it is much easier to find free open source apps and projects with clear information and dedicated pages to help you understand what each application offers. And sometimes this is a lot simpler than having to delve through GitHub and other services. The Aurora Store is a great way as well to get Play Store apps without Google Play services or Micro G installed on your phone. So if you do have a rooted device or you have a device running a custom ROM, that might be an option for you. Even if you do hate our recommendations in this video, I think these two apps are well worth a look as you might find something else that you love and want to use on your phone. What's interesting is that you can grab the Aurora Store from F-Droid 2. So download F-Droid first and grab Aurora Store from there if you do want it. So Seal is a gorgeous downloader application that utilizes YouTube DLP to make it easier to save any types of media file from practically any website on your device. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, basically anywhere that you happen to find videos on the internet, you can just grab the share link paste it and let Seal download it locally to your phone. This app itself is full of material you tweaks that you can fully customize as well. And it lets you choose things like file formats, grabbable playlists, videos, and even embedded subtitles. It also lets you choose video quality or the video quality you're gonna download. And there is more than what not option available for you to do that. If you want offline access to videos to watch later, I do think Seal is the perfect solution and one of the best apps not on the Play Store, which is why I've put this up first after F-Droid. You will need an external video player to view the content, but you probably knew that already. While there are some question marks over this is technically piracy or considered piracy, I think at least for personal usage, it's probably gonna be fine. And it's one of the best apps of its kind, period, and great for downloading and sharing memes, which is what I tend to use it for and do all the time here. So Gmail itself is getting bloated. And aside from a number of features that still haven't made the jump over from Inbox, RIP there, Gemini is getting shoehorned into this application wherever possible. And for that reason, I think you might want an alternative email client. K9 Mail is a lightweight and most importantly, clean email client that does just what it's supposed to, manage your e-correspondence on your phone. Here's the kicker though. K9 Mail is actually available from the Google Play Store. It's actually developed by Mozilla as well, the people behind Firefox, but you can grab it from external sources. And that means that certain updates will probably arrive quicker due to the slower approval process that you'll find on the Google Play Store. Fairmail is another good alternative to K9 Mail, which I was gonna suggest, but visually I just don't think it's quite as nice in my opinion. And that means K9 Mail gets my seal of approval if you don't wanna use it on your phone as just a basic down to earth, if I can call it that, email application. Smart Doc is a great application because it lets you add a persistent quick access dock to your Android phone or indeed your tablet. It's the customization controls I think that sets this apart from other custom options and even some third party launchers. It's similar to the Pixel taskbar, but with way more controls like a quick access notification panel, persistent app shortcuts and other widgets that don't get in the way. You can tweak it to mimic a true desktop taskbar like you'll see on Windows or even Linux if you do want to do that. But I found it has some minor issues with the Uber curves of my Pixel 9 display. So play around with it if you are gonna try this out for yourself. Even so, I do think it still looks great and can be tailored to the taste of the true mobile power user. So it's definitely worth a try if you do want something a little bit more 
like your desktop in the palm of your hand. So third party keyboards are definitely a dime a dozen, but open board is a cool keyboard replacement that although hasn't been updated for quite a while now, has that classic AOSP and even the old Gboard feel, like that think Gboard from a few, way few years back without having any extra crud or crap tacked on. Gboard is really getting a little bit bloated now, especially with all these extra add-ons. So this is a nice, lightweight, super clean keyboard alternative. You get basic and common functions like a clipboard history, dedicated one-handed mode, a couple of basic themes thrown in and some multiple layouts as well, for those of you in the rest of the world, it's designed with privacy in mind, so you can even stop open board from learning new words, which means they're not added to the dictionary, therefore causing some privacy concerns. My favorite function though is the throwback hollow theme, which is a really nice trip down memory line if you, like me, started on the old Nexus series. Most importantly, I do think it's just a solid digital keyboard. If you do like simple keyboards but want even more options, then you might want to try Simple Keyboard. It's really similar but has a few more customization options included if you do want those. If you record lots of audio like voice notes or even something like a podcast on your phone, then Recording Studio Lite offers, I think, what is one of the best interfaces and set of controls that you can find out there. It's a super clean audio recording app that has a gorgeous digital waveform when you are recording audio itself. There's controls to pause recordings and deep metadata tagging options thrown in. I think it's these tags that separate this from any other free recording application on the Play Store or otherwise. You can change the file format and even the codec right there on the fly, which is great if you have preferences or issues with compatibility on devices you don't want to export these files to. Tagging to audio sources is also great if you want to use your phone as an external recorder, something I've done on a few occasions already with Recording Studio Lite as it's nice to use. To simplify though, the material you theme in looks great and lets you edit metadata on the fly as I mentioned, plus it does what it sets out to, which is just record audio and let you listen back. Breezy Weather is a simple but stunning app that is all about getting key data from your local weather conditions. So at startup, when you first install this, you can customize your sources, the data formats, the alert status, and a few more things on top of that. You can do things like add custom icons to tailor the look and feel of this application too, but I would say leave it as standard because it looks great as is. There are really some delightful animations when you view local conditions and everything is laid out thoughtfully with expansive options that you can sift through if you wanna dial down into the nitty gritty details and get true control of what's happening in the weather in your area. We even get 13 beautiful home screen widgets that some of them do look eerily similar to the Pixel exclusive weather widgets. So if you do have a non-Pixel phone, you can get that. This is a really comprehensive set of widgets as well that is ideal for getting quick glance, glanceable information without destroying your on-device theme. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's one of my favorite weather apps out there. So that is a super short list. We could have done hundreds and hundreds, but I thought eight or so would be perfect. I wanna ask you, do you use any applications on your Android phone that you can't get on the Play Store? If you do, let us know your favorites down in the comments sections below, but please keep it clean. I know there's lots of applications out there that do lots of different things that of course, sometimes go above and beyond what the Play Store will allow you to do, but sometimes there are gems like the ones we've just shown. I wanna say thanks to our channel members on screen now, true legends, but until next time, I will speak to you later.